absolutely outrageous. Parking in San Francisco. It's insane. There's not enough parking. There's too many cars. A difficult part of life here. You find a spot, get a ticket anyway. I got hit with $2,000 worth of parking tickets. It, It just seems wrong. For Judy and Ed Crane, it seems especially unfair. We moved in and parked in that driveway every midday and every night. They live on the steep hill where parking can be a gravity-defying challenge. But they could slip into their driveway and park on their car pad, which they'd been doing every day for the past 36 years. But not anymore. We got this email and we can't park in the parking pad anymore. And I said, what? That's crazy. Out of the blue, the couple got this ticket for parking in their own driveway. It was very surprising, to say the least. And worse, it came with an enormous fine, $1,542 plus another $250 per day if they didn't get the car off their car pad. I wrote back to them and I said I thought it was a mistake. But it was no mistake and no ordinary parking ticket. It came from the city planning department telling them it's illegal to park in the front yard of a house. And if we were found parking there again, it would be a $1,500 fine. And so they quickly pulled the car out, but none of it made sense. Why are you taking away something that has great utility, not just to us, but our neighbors in terms of more parking spaces? Ed and Judy had been parking there for nearly four decades, and as far as they could tell, the space was used for parking since the house was built back in 1910, one of the first in their Noe Valley neighborhood. All of a sudden be told you can't use something that we had used for years. It's startling. And so the planning department gave them a challenge. Prove the parking was a historic use on the lot, and they might get a waiver. We could be grandfathered in if we showed them a historical photo that showed a car or a buggy, a horse-drawn buggy, in the carport. Right away, they dug up this photo of their daughter 34 years ago. A part of the car barely visible, but officials said not old enough. I did a number of online searches and tried to find historic resources. So they combed through hundreds of historic photos. Plenty showed the early days when there were few streets or homes. Our house and our neighbor's house had empty fields all around. But to find a photo of a car or a horse in their particular driveway back before the days of iPhone cameras, nearly impossible. And then, bingo. To me, it's pretty compelling that that was a car. This aerial photo from 1938 shows their exact home. So this is our house. And Ed is sure he can see a car or horse and buggy pulling into his driveway. So this little black blob looks like it's pulling into our house. It looks like just a blob from above, but Ed says it must be a car, like all these other blobs you can see along the road. I don't know what else they would be. To me, it's pretty compelling that that was a car pulling in or out of a parking pad. They rushed the photo to the planning department, the proof they needed, right? Wrong. They said that they were too fuzzy. The planning department said this was not clear evidence. Officials tell us the couple was violating a code section banning vehicles in a setback in front of a house. Though it's okay to park in front of a garage like this. Planning Chief Dan Sider says it was enacted decades ago for aesthetic reasons. To quote, ensure that front yards don't turn into parking lots. But why enforce it now? He said someone made an anonymous complaint to the city. Two neighbors also got tagged for the same violation. In an email, Sider wrote, I recognize that the property owner is frustrated, but the planning code doesn't allow for the city to grandfather illegal uses on account of their having flown below the radar for a length of time. And so their carport sits empty as they struggle to park on the hill. This feels really unfair and like we're being punished.